Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Hello, I'm Kerry L. Watt and welcome to the show. I was reading recently on Entrepreneur that in our age of new business models and rapid growth, effective risk management has become a critical factor for the success of businesses. Now, Business Insider also said that apparently 44% of small businesses stick around for just four years. And one big reason for this is that so many disappear is poor risk management. Now, my guest today has some fascinating insight into risk and value management, and that's exactly what we're going to talk about. So please welcome Carleen Agard to the show. Welcome, Carleen. Kerry, thank you so much for having me. Oh, I'm so happy. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so let's go back to that statistic of 44% of businesses failing and risk management being a big part of that. Does that surprise you at all? No, it doesn't. I think uh, for a lot of small businesses in particular, they don't really understand risk management. They don't know how to incorporate it. It seems really complicated for them. So I think to a certain extent, it's quite neglected. And even in larger organisations, it's not always dealt with in the most effective way. So, um, And when you don't address risk, it, it leads to problems So occurring. So I'm not surprised to hear that, no. Mm. And can you tell us what, what value management means? Because I'm not particularly sure myself, so I'd love to hear in your words what, what that's all about. So value management is about getting the most out of the resources you have. There's actually a, a ratio, which is value is your benefits or functions divided by your resources. So typically your resources are cost or time and it's about maximizing that ratio. So you get more out of what you more of what you want out of the resources that you have available to you. Oh wow. That's really interesting. I presumed it was probably something like that, but I was like, I'm not really sure. I'm gonna ask. <laughs> <laughs> what's um and can you tell us what's the what's the biggest misconception or myth that businesses have around risk management? Well, I think it probably, it may vary depending on the size of the organisation. So in large organisations, you've got this misconception that it's just a tick box exercise. It's something you do to satisfy um, your auditing and statutory requirements, where whilst in larger, in small organisations, I think it may be a case that um, they don't really understand it and and therefore, therefore they don't do it. Mm. And what what led you to go into this field? What what was it about it that that drew you to it? Well, I I was actually working in Network Rail as a change project management assistant. And as part of that, I'd done some training in risk and I was also running some risk workshops. And I saw a second then as a risk and value analyst. And I thought, oh, that looks interesting. Um, And it talked about the opportunity to help projects succeed, um, to help them understand their anything negative arising, make sure that things are more positive do occur and they get the outcomes that they want. Um, And also, I've always had quite an analytical way of thinking. Maths was one of my strongest subjects throughout my academic history. And so I thought it it seemed like an interesting role to go for. And and I was right. (laughs) It's been great. (laughs) Yeah, that's really interesting, actually, when you say about the, the analytical side because I guess that's a big that's a big part of it right yes yes it is and what led you to actually start your own business as well it's all like it's just so different isn't it like being a project manager in a in a large organization to going out solo so what led you to to start that so I working as a risk and value analyst I really loved what I was doing so I got to run workshops to help get the largest projects uh, set up correctly so make make sure they're really clear on what the outcomes that they need to achieve so rather than just doing the same thing that they've always done they can consider other options more innovative options for achieving their outcomes which could actually also save them money and potentially save them time so I really enjoyed doing that helping them to understand not just the risk to delivery but also the risks that come from delivering the project for the organization itself and was able to work on some of the largest projects because 
I had a talent for risk management and value management in particular, which uh, went recognised in the organisation. So I was an award there and also was nominated for awards in, with external bodies. So it was just something that I really loved doing and was passionate about. And I later came back to it and said, you know, this is the thing that I've, I've really most enjoyed in my career. So I thought, why don't I start a business doing that so that I'm able to do as much of that as as, as yeah, I love that. I just, I always love hearing how people started and like what their story is. I just think it's fascinating. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and um, and you, you mentioned before about doing workshops as well. And I, is, is that something that you do quite a lot? Is it not just the traditional consultancy done for you? Uh, are lots of companies sort of looking to workshops and, and training now? Yeah, workshops are a really effective way of, of getting things done. So I think the key is in the preparation. So if you have, if you can speak to the key stakeholders beforehand, have a really clear idea of what it is that you need to get out of the workshop and then get the right people in the room so that you can get the knowledge that you need from them and also do any preparation, both as a facilitator, myself, uh, other people who, who are providing the inputs, make sure that they fully, uh, that they've got the information they need. So workshop you're able to make decisions to get things done and, and move things forward but workshops are a really effective way of um of getting things done mm, I love that and I think when when people invest in the in those one day or a couple of days whatever it is workshops and that training they're then more likely to kind of take action aren't they and actually make stuff happen yeah I completely agree Mm. And you're a speaker as well. You you speak at various events, and and we were um, I've known you a little while, and we were talking before about um, a, a talk that you have coming up at the time of recording. It's it's uh, next week, um, and I love the title of this talk. Right, it's called From Failure to Forbes, and I just think <laughs> really like just says what it is, and and massively like if I was going to invent and I saw that, I'd be like what is that like I'd be so intrigued so what can you just tell us about that story and and why why you're talking about it next week sure. so normally what I do in when I'm speaking at, at events is that I'll speak about risk management I'll speak about value management I'll speak about starting mega projects effectively you know those are my core topics within my discipline but um this time up <coughs> This time I was asked to speak on the, the topic of empowering self. So the, it's the 25th anniversary of the Women in Project Management Association, uh, sorry, within the Women in Project Management group within the Association for Project Management or APM. And the, the theme of the conference is empowerment, which I think is an, an excellent topic. Now, I, I, I was asked to speak in the empowering self stream. So I, uh, this is you know, not the easiest thing for me to do because I'm going to have to be a bit more vulnerable, but I'll be talking about my, uh, my personal story. So uh, just to give you a quick overview, I was a super nerdy all throughout school. Um, when I was in, when I was eight years old, my teacher said, Carleen, you know, she needs to read less and she needs to socialize more. <laughs> oh, <laughs> this wow. is yeah. So that, that was school. I, I was very nerdy. I um, wanted to do the I really enjoyed school. Then I went to university. So I went to the University of Warwick and I, I really struggled there. So I didn't, I, I procrastinated a lot. I, I struggled with depression and I did not do well in my degree. So I was really disheartened. And that was the point at which, although I didn't actually fail in my degree, I really felt like a failure. Yes. So, you know, all of my peers were going off to work in banking and, to work as, as lawyers and with top consulting firms. And I was there temping in jobs that I, that didn't challenge me. I didn't find them interesting. So I really felt down at that point, but I could have um, just said, you know, there's no hope for me. Everyone else is on a grad scheme and, and that's it. But I decided to, you know, try my best to work my way up, which is what I did. So I temped for a while, had a chance to temp at Network Rail and uh, I worked there. And then I was able to turn that temporary job into a permanent job. And then I received uh, two promotions within three years and worked my way up. So I worked as a change of management assistant, which is very interesting and I enjoyed it. I worked as a risk and value analyst where I, I found my, I really found my stride. And like I mentioned earlier, I was able to um, 
build up my skill set such that I got to work on the most exciting projects within the portfolio. Um, and after that, I went to Transport London, where I worked as a risk manager. And then I went to Parliament for one year on the International Trade Select Committee, which was really, really interesting. Um, obviously, uh, di- different from what I'd done previously in my career, which was, which was in transport, but it was useful to get an insight into decision making within Parliament, within the government, because, you know, for mega projects in particular, which is the, the field that I work in, that's where the decision making often begins. And then I started my own company because, like I said, I, I really want to, uh, I, I love working on mega projects and helping to start them up for success using risk and value management. So I wanted to find a vehicle where I could do that as much as, as possible. Wow, that is incredible. I have to say I'm a little bit jealous yeah. about the uh, Parliament thing. <laughs> That's oh, awesome. that was amazing. <laughs> Was it actually cool though? Because I bet loads of people go, oh wow, you know, like when I used to travel loads for work, people would be like, oh, that's amazing. And I'd just be like, no, I just want to go home. Like, was it actually really cool? <laughs> it was. I mean, you, you'd walk around the Palace of Westminster and you'd see these politicians that you recognise. Um, and also the palace itself is, is a beautiful environment. And just being uh, in the seat of power, as it were, is, is really interesting and learning how things work there. I really enjoyed it. Mm. And I think um, I, I really picked up on what you said about failure. And, and I think a lot of people can resonate with that, that like you say, you didn't actually fail technically on paper, but you kind of felt like because you didn't the best that you potentially could have, that you felt like a failure. And I think it's so many people can resonate with that. And I think it's incredible that you're sharing your story in, you know, on the platform of speaking. I think, I think people will, get a lot from that and it's so easy isn't it to to look at what other people are doing and not feel like you're getting anywhere isn't it yeah I I can really relate to that because you know you only see the airbrushed versions of people's lives people Mm -hmm. post on social media they post on LinkedIn they post on Facebook they don't talk about the struggles they're going through they only share highlights well typically they only share what's going well in their lives and actually it doesn't present the full picture um, and it's important that we do talk about these things because oftentimes when you're in a place where you feel like you failed, you feel down, you don't, you feel very isolated and you don't think anyone else can relate to it. And that's, that's just not the case. Yeah. It's something that we all struggle with. Yeah, that's the thing. And, you know, even I've always been really surprised when I, you know, you sort of have a glass of wine with a friend and you're like, oh, you're nailing life. You know, you're doing amazing. And then they kind of reveal <laughs> no, actually, it's not all roses. Um, and I think, you know, a lot of people can resonate with that sort of looking at other people. And yeah, like I say, I just think it's great that you're actually sharing your experience. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I, I can relate to that as well. I've, I've seen it with other people that I look up to and people who've said yeah. they admire things that I'm doing. It's like, well, you, you know, you may see certain things that I choose to share, but actually there's a lot more behind the surface. And, and up until this year, I hadn't I voluntarily told only about, um, I think, one person. So it was something that I was really ashamed about. (laughs) Mm, Yeah, and it's just, it's celebrating, you know, who we are in our journey. And just imagine, like, if you had have, like, aced uni, like, done the best, like, you wouldn't have had the same journey, would you? You wouldn't have gone temping and you wouldn't have had that fire in your belly to, like, to really grow and work hard and, like, be really focused. Is that fair? Yeah, I think I think my journey would definitely have been different. I don't know that I would have found uh, the job, the work that I love doing, because mm-hmm. that wasn't the path that I was headed on at the time. So, so who knows? I mean, it, it was in some senses it was fortuitous because it happened at a point which was early enough for me to say, okay, this this has this is not ideal, but I can still pick up the pieces and move on and. I've actually been able to forge a career that I'm really happy with since that point. Yeah, and that's incredible. So I wondered, just bringing it back to companies, like what are the what are the advantages for companies that want to commit to risk and value management? Well, it comes down to the bottom line, but I'd also say there are some other elements that may not be obvious at first. So risk when you look at risk management, it will help you to make better decisions 
So if you take a, if you're weighing up two options and you say, okay, we can go with option A or we can go with option B. Option A may appear on the surface to be more profitable, but actually, if you haven't analysed the risks, you might it might be the case that B is more profitable. And if you pick A, then you've lost out on money or you've lost out on time. And it doesn't. Um, you know, that, that's why it's important to make sure that you understand the risk because it helps to inform decision making and make sure that you're making the best decision. And value management, as I mentioned, is about maximising the resources that you have. So and at this, when you're beginning an initiative, it's about understanding that you clearly define what the outcomes are that you need. So people um, and this is particularly true in the project management profession have a real tendency to want to get things done which is great but you need to make sure that you fully understand the problem that you're solving before you try and solve it because you may come up with a solution that actually doesn't get you to what you need and value management is about making sure that you, you clearly define your outcomes at the start and then the decision making throughout the process reflects that and you're able to get the most out of the resources that you have. Yeah, I love that. I love how, yeah, that just makes so much sense. You just explain it so beautifully, like to how they complement each other. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so is there anything that you feel is, is important for people to know that we haven't covered today? Uh, there wasn't anything else that I wanted to add. Mm. Well, thank you so much for sharing this and your, your own personal story as well. And, and thank you for being here today. And how can someone that wants to find out more hear about Carleen Agard and how you can help them? I really appreciate you having me on the show. Thank you so much, Kerry. <laughs> um, in terms of staying in touch, I'm available on different media as Carleen Agard. So I'm on Twitter with Carleen underscore Agard, Carleen Agard on LinkedIn. Um, and in terms of my company, Aravan, if you're working on a mega project or project management and you'd like my help, I'm available on aravan.com. So Aravan is A-R-A-N or Alpha Aravan or Alpha Victor November dot com or on Twitter it's Aravan L T D and LinkedIn it's Aravan and uh, Facebook it's it's Aravan L T D. Awesome. Thank you so much Carleen and thank you everyone for listening. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.